Hi, I'm Mike Allison, Managing Director of Yellen Deer Services. Today what we're going to do is carry out a, uh, a park cull on uh, red deer and uh, all the dressing and carcass preparation is going to be done out here in the field. It's important to get everything prepared to make sure that you've got everything that you need uh, to make the job sort of easy for yourself and also hygienic um, to produce a hygienic carcass at the end of it um, to produce safe hygienic meat at the end of it. So we're going to use this this hoist here that's uh, designed to fit on the tow bar of the vehicle. Uh, it's uh, galvanized steel so it's, uh, it's, it's robust, it'll lift a red deer, one of the heaviest red deer, as high as you need it uh, to work on. So uh, just uh, we're, we're going to go through the whole process here so hopefully uh, you give some good tips and we're going to skin uh, red deer as well so uh, Hopefully that'll give you a good idea or a good indication of how to uh, how to skin a red deer easily and uh, cleanly. Before carrying out any park calls, it's important that you make sure that everything you've got is of the best quality that you can afford. Uh, today we're using a Seiko Bavarian, uh, using a bipod to make sure it's a steady uh, and precise shot. The bipod is not designed to take long shots, it's designed to ensure precise shots using a moderator because around this area we are in a, a sort of semi sort of public place so uh, we need to sort of cut down disturbance and noise to a minimum. This is a 306 rifle <coughs> which some argue may be a little bit overgunned for what we're doing but it is very effective. Uh, it's my calibre of choice from Muntjac right up to uh, the biggest red deer and uh, you know, we, today we've got a client that's shooting with us. He's doing the shooting, and uh, you know we're doing all the preparation work and everything. So it's important that you, you know make sure that the guy knows what he's doing. He's already been out on the range and proved himself that he can shoot straight. So uh, you know we've we've removed all the the risk factors that are out there as far as we can. So uh, you know, it's just how we shoot straight today. So we're also using a, a selection of various knives. Uh, my favourite uh, and most useful knife is this one, we call the ball tipped knife. It's got, uh, as you can see, a ball on the end of it, so it avoids you puncturing any sort of uh, vital organs inside the animal. Uh, we're also going to use this one, which is another sort of blunt ended knife, uh, which we use for opening up the abdominal cavity. We're going to use a six inch boning knife which we're going to use to make the, the, the initial incisions in the carcass to free off the anus and also uh, to take the head and the legs off. Uh, it's an incredibly useful knife. None of these knives are any good unless they're sharp. So uh, we use the Mora and Outdoor Edge sort of range because we know that you can get a very good edge on them and, uh, and it's important that these are razor sharp to be able to do the job efficiently. Um, it's worth remembering that uh, most of the time when people get, end up cutting themselves they're usually cutting themselves with blunt knives because they're putting too much pressure on, uh, on what they're doing. So we'll, hopefully we'll show you how to, how to use each of these knives uh, in, in the field environment. Today we're also going to use to recover the carcass we're going to use a stretcher that we normally use for for live animals but it works it's perfect for what we want to do today which is basically recover the animal off the off the ground and uh, put it into the back of the pickup uh, and hopefully uh, containing any any blood that uh, that has leaked out of the carcass we're also using this galvanized uh, cradle which uh, folds down flat uh, they're available from Yellen Deer Services if you're interested in buying one. And th what it does, it basically means we've got the, the carcass at the right height to be able to work on it. It also keeps the carcass off the floor, so reducing contamination to an absolute minimum as far as we can. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, the, the gentleman who's coming to shoot now, we're going to get him out there and uh, get a deer on the ground and then we'll go through the whole process and show you how it's done Yellen style. Yeah. Okay, right, we're, um, we're out to stay on this piece of land and what we're going to do is we've got some uh, cull spiker red deer that we need right. to take out. Um, obviously it's quite important to be really safe. Um, down this back, down the back here, we've got a nice uh, area of rising ground. Um, so it should present some really safe shots for you to take off the back of the truck at the top. Okay. okay. Well, about one in the corner, left hand side. Yeah. 
Tracked like that. Yeah. And put my fingers around the tube and ease it out of the carcass. It's sort of circular motion, just like that. And then cut it off from the inside out, and that's nice and free. Right, so what we're going to do first is take the legs off. We've already made a hole in the hock there, it doesn't need to be too big, it only be, needs to be enough to get the uh, the gambrel through. right? And then to take the back legs off, what we're basically looking for, there's a little joint there with a slight tiny little depression in there. The easy way to find it is if you look between the scent gland and the first joint, that area is right in the centre. And if you get it right, the legs should just snap off like a cat rut, just like that, and end up with a flat, a flat end. Okay, so you've got that flat end of, of the, the joint. Okay, so we'll try that, put all the debris down there for a moment. I'll do that again on the, the same on, this, on the other leg. All the way around. And again, if it's right, it should just snap off. There it is. And there's your flat joint again. Okay, so what you're aiming to do when you take the legs off, the golden rule is, is to be able to, to cut the sinews, the tendons, and the skin all the way around. You know, if you try to cut bone, all you're going to end up with is a blunt knife. So once you cut around all of that stuff, provided you've got it in the right place, that will just snap off like a carrot, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're doing munt jack, fallow deer, red deer, even cattle, the principle is exactly the same to getting the legs off. And it is really, really easy once you know how to do it. So it's, it's all about practice at the end of the day. Okay, now I'll show you how to do the front legs. The front legs, are, it's quite similar. If you look, turn the leg at 90 degrees, people do it like that. Some people do it like that, where they're cutting towards their hands, but this is the way I prefer it. Everybody's got their own ways, and it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you end up with the same result. So if you look at that from 90 degrees, you've got like two joints. You've got one there and one there, and in between. A lot of people cut in between. The correct way, or the best way, is to cut right on the top of this, uh, this joint. So right on the top of it, all the way around it. And you can see that joint's already starting to open up. Okay, all the way around. Once you've got, again, you're aiming to cut the skin, the sinews, and the ligaments, nothing else. Once you've got it there, just 180 degrees around like that, and then all you have to do is cut the soft tissue out, and you've got the same flat surface finish on there. On there. Okay, so I'll show you again on the, the last leg. So you've got the two joints there, one there, one there, it looks like two kneecaps. Fly. It's like got the same, same joints there and there. Looks like two kneecaps, and you want to be on the bottom one, right on the top of it, like that, all the way around. You're not aiming to cut the bone. You're only aiming to cut the ligaments, and the sinews. Okay, and then exactly the same again. Round that 180 degrees. Off she'll come. And there we are. What we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to enter into the carcass, the cavities now. So before we do that, make sure that our knives are clean, okay, before going on to the next stage. Okay, so now we're going to enter into the body cavity, and uh, this, is, this is my way of doing it. Everybody's got their own way. I look for the end of the sternum. If you can see that, the end of the sternum is there, the hard bit, and then it goes into soft. Okay, so what we do is cut down through the skin one of the few times when we'll cut from the outside in and you just make a cut uh, just deep enough to reach the bone and give you somewhere to get uh, another knife in there and then to open the to open the rest of the carcass now what I'm going to use is this the, the blunt ended knife so that we're not going to puncture any internal organs and then once we get into the gut cavity, keep your knife, knife. Once you get into the gut cavity, keep your knife nice and flat, and just cut down almost to the testicles. 
and make sure that all the bits on the inside are cut as well, all the membranes that are keeping it in place. Now what you'll notice about this is that it's difficult to keep these clean because they've been wallowing, you know, they're, they're already sort of covered in sort of debris and soil and mud. So we want to sort of minimize the uh, amount of contamination as far as we can, okay? Which is another reason why we need to cut from the inside out rather than the other way, okay? So what we're going to do now is just cut the skin, not the meat, just the skin, all the way down, or very sharp little knife, just point in there and cut the skin. You're only aiming to just cut the skin down to there. So you come down the front of the leg, not down the inside of the armpit, down the front of the leg, all the way till you get to the shoulder and cut 45 degrees inwards. And exactly the same on the other leg. So you get the tip of the ball tip in there and just slide it down the front of the leg till you get to there and then you come 45 degrees in till you meet this central sort of incision. This is quite important as far as making the, the job of skinning easier for me. It's make sure you get your hands are clean and get that point of skin there where you where you took, took it to the central line and pull it back. Okay, so pull it back as basically as far as you can get it. And then you've actually skinned out the armpit on that one side. And the same at the other side. So you grab that point of skin, pull that all the way back as far as you can get it, and there you've skinned that armpit out. What I'm going to use now is a, is a clean knife, and I'm going to start by cutting down the center line. You see how the muscles are still very much responding to that stimulus, even though it's been dead for a good 25 minutes now. Okay, and cut straight down the centre. The importance of cutting from the inside out is if you'd have cut from the outside in, you would have cut all this hair and contaminated this bit with, uh, with soil and debris. Cut down right the way down to there. Just make sure that we've got that central bit there. This animal's already been bled down there anyway. This, this is just residual blood from the chest cavity. What we're gonna do now is saw the chest cavity. So start down the, uh, the center line, right on the point of the, the, the brisket. Cut through. Carcass through the, the uh, sternum right until you get to the end. One final thing now before we uh, suspend the animal is to cut down both sides of the hock using the ball tip knife. Right, you do that on both sides, so from the from the hole where you've hocked it right out to the end. And the same on this side, both legs. So straight down there. You, all you aim to do is cut the skin, okay? And the same on the inside, and that will make life easier when you're trying to skin the uh, the hocks off when it's suspended, okay? And down he, there he is. So we've done everything we need to do now uh, in this position. Now we can suspend the animal and start uh, completing the gralic, and then we'll start to skin it as well. stainless steel gambrels and then push the animal up. As he's coming up what I do is normally grab the, uh, the cradle, keep the animal off the ground like until we can get the cradle completely out of the way. The animal is then suspended as high as we want it to go. Okay. Mm. What we want to do now is, this is the uh, the other end of the anal track that we sort of freed off at the other end. So we now ease that through and we've got that out of the carcass where it's not, not going to do any harm. Right. 
Right, so what we've got here is one of the lymph nodes that looks enlarged. It looks like an enlarged lymph lymph node, but when you incise it, uh, there's not there's nothing in there that to be worried about. So we're pretty relaxed on that on that one. Right, then we we'll ease this down now until until we can see the the kidneys. And what we're going to do then is start to cut the diaphragm just below the kidneys and above the liver and you cut the diaphragm all the way around like that and the same at that side and you can see that the weight of it alone has completely taken that lot out when we get down to here we've just got one big incision there and another one there and that will free that off as well and you can take that down right down to the bottom and any gut contents that has come out has leaked down out of the way yeah what I'm going to do is cut up here now and just, just slice the skin that's holding everything together take the uh, testicles and the penis away just cut that off completely go down there use the blunt tip knife to go through the skin okay both front and back so you're starting from the from the incision straight up there Okay. What we also want to do now is make an incision need to also open the skin from here right up to the uh, to the hock. Okay, using the ball tip knife again all the way up to there. Okay, and again, at this other side, so all the way up to the hop until it meets that hole there. And to start the skinning process, this is again the way I do it, it's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. You start from the middle of the carcass and just stroke the membranes that's holding the skin onto the flesh, and if you see. You can zoom in close there. You can see all we're doing is releasing that. You see that my knife cut is actually about a quarter of an inch away from the flesh, but it's still releasing it. Okay, just enough so that you can get your hand in there. I'll leave that like that, and then the same on the other side. So we're starting there. We're just skinning it just a little bit by stroking the knife on the skin not the joint between the skin and the uh, and the membrane and you can see how that has now made a little pocket there you can get your hand in a lot of people have different ideas as far as skinning is concerned i prefer to skin without gloves on i, f I find it easier okay so make sure you've got some clean water Keep our hands clean. So for that we use a little water bowser. Right, so what I'm going to do now is start the skinning process. So keep your hands clean, got some water there. We'll start by basically putting the knuckles in there. So you get about four fingers in there. And then you can see that pocket in there. See something better from there, yeah? Right. So you can get your, your knuckles in there. Basically drive your knuckles as far to the spine, around to the back, try and get your knuckles right the way around the back as you can. Once you've got as deep as you can there, then skin the animal upwards using your knuckles. Okay, so you can get up there. Pull that off with your, with your hands. So you're basically peeling it off, off the leg, and then you can get your hands in there. And again, pull that, push that skin off with your knuckles and your fist. Okay, and you get to the top, push up there, and then push your fingers all the way through, 
until you get until you come out the other side like that okay see my fingers once you go out there turn your hand round and roll off the skin keeping hold of it don't let it go it's important you don't let it go at this stage otherwise hair and debris is going to go onto the, the flesh right and then roll that off so you get the front bit off this is why you cut up the side of the hocks there okay and then make sure your hands are clean okay and then roll that off so get underneath it almost try and lift it off the gamble and off she'll come there and pull that down just as far as the tail that's all you need to do and then you can have a break and no matter what you do the skin isn't going to flap against the carcass because you haven't skinned that bit off okay then you can see there's quite a bit of debris off the skin so it's important we don't transfer that to the meat so sorry keep hands washed Sometimes having wet hands actually helps the skinning process because it allows you to get your get your hands in there, allows them to go in there easier. Right, so the clean hands again. Always, if you change hands and you're putting the other hand against the meat, then you need to make sure it's clean. So we've got one hand holding the dirty side, and one hand doing the clean work. Okay, we do the same again. So we reach around as far as we can go. To create that little pocket and that's our starting point and then work our way up the carcass just using your, your thumb and your knuckles and your fist okay drive that all the way up there pull this off skin that the top of that leg always keeping the skin away from the away from the carcass. Okay. Then it's all using your knuckles, your thumb and your fingers. Just get in there. When you first do this, it all seems really, really hard. And uh, you know, and it is if you don't get it right. But if you know exactly where you need to be in that membrane between the skin and the flesh, it's relatively easy. And you've just got to know, it's all about practice and how you do it. So get your hand through there, turn your hand round, and hold that skin to keep it away from the carcass. And roll it off. Roll the front bit off first. And then try and lift it off the back gamble to do the, the back bit. And pull that down as far as the tail. That's all you need to do at the moment. And we'll wash our hands again. It's from where you've uh, you've skinned down to, just punch this bit away using your thumb and your knuckles. A little bit. So you get to there, you can see the start of the bacon stripes. Okay, then you basically get your hand in that pocket that you made initially and drive your hand all the way down with your forearm, push your forearm down to skin the front part of the animal off. And because you've skinned, already skinned the uh, armpits out, then your hand should just slip at the bottom. So you do the same at the other side, so from that pocket that you made initially, push that skin away from the flesh, you can see the start of the bacon stripes, okay, you get your hand in that pocket that you made and drive it earthwards, and as you're doing that, use your forearm to push the front part of the skin off, again you've, you've already skinned the armpits out, so you should get down to there, okay. Then we wash our hands again. Okay, because we're down to here, 
We should push our hands now so it comes right out the bottom. Okay, so there it is. And then just roll that skin off the front leg. Like that. Until it comes off the end. Okay. Another quick wash again. And the same at this side. So use a clean hand. Push that right down to the bottom until it comes out the end. Again, keep try and keep it as clean as possible. Push that off off the end. Okay. Another, another wash. What we're going to do now is we're going to just cut the tail off. So if we spin it round like that so you can see, there's a little gristly joint about there. Your knife should just slide straight through that little joint. Let's cut that a little bit off there. What generally happens here, people grab that and pull it straight down. Right? And what will happen if you do that, it will pull all these bacon stripes off and it will make the carcass look less, less attractive. Okay, so where we want to do this now, so you cross your hands over like that, grab the skin either side of the tail, bring it over and twist it over again, and then walk away outwards, away from the carcass. And just skin it out like that. And it's pulled some of the bacon stripes off, but it's not the end of the world. I pull the, the neck skin one side and then the other. One side and then the other. So it comes off the end. Like that. Okay. Now you're always going to get, you're never going to be able to keep it perfectly clean uh, in these conditions. You know, we're outside, we're not in a controlled environment and uh, it is difficult to skin an animal cleanly when you're outside in the field. But the, all these bits, the non, the, the cheaper ends of the carcass, you know, a lot of this stuff will be thrown away anyway. So there's, a, there's ways of sort of keeping this out of the way. If you sort of get that little membrane and cut that off completely away from the carcass, you've effectively got rid of the contamination that was, was on there. And the same at the other side. You know, this bit is not going to be used anyway, so we can sort of cut that off and it just improves the overall sort of look of the carcass. The same, any, any bits like that that, are, that have got, you know, tiny bits of contamination on them, you can get them off, okay? A bit there as well. Just cut those bits of membrane off that are carrying the, the contamination and it should be all right there's the bladder there it isn't full but there's still enough urine in there to cause a problem so what we want to do is basically come from the other end and cut around all the membranes up there that are holding that in place and I'll show you how to do that so just stick the knife in here now you can't see but you'll see on the next one and cut the way all the way around the membranes making sure that you keep the knife to the bone rather than pointing it into the, into the bladder itself and you can see sort of daylight up there now what you need to do is reach up above the bladder have split anyway pull that down cut that out and you've got the bladder intact with everything with it